Welcome to iTalk, an interview program about issues and controversies in ophthalmology. And I'm Natalia Nisimo, and today we are speaking to the cornea specialist from Greece, Aris Zamlis. Hello, Aris. Hello, Dr. Anisimova. Thank you for inviting me to talk about such an interesting topic today. And today uh, we're speaking about corneal cross-linking and it is well-established treatment in uh, progressive keratoconus. Uh, the success rate of uh, cross-linking in keratoconus is relatively high. Uh, is cross-linking is really effective um, in every patient? Well, this is a big debate uh, about that because uh, we do know that uh, cross-linking is effective and we do know that it is a safe option for our patients that have a progression of keratoconus. But the big question is what you just, answer, what you just uh, uh, asked me. So is it equally effective in every patient? Well, of course, the answer is a big no. And the reason for that is because not every eye and not every cornea respond the same way to cross-linking, to this irradiation. And the factors that can actually uh, influence that are many and uh, these include the age of the patient and also a lot of uh, corneal properties and biomechanical parameters such as uh, the corneal thickness and also the keratometry values and of course other uh, corneal parameters such as uh, maybe some scarring or the development of uh, vernal or atopic keratoconjunctivitis. So definitely not all eyes do not respond the same way in cross-linking and that's why we do have in some patients a very uh, good result like not only uh, a cessation of uh, the progression of keratoconus but also a regression of the keratometric values and a flattening of the cornea but still in some cases we may not see that. Uh, is really uh, cross-linking is capable for an absolute cessation of keratoconus progression? Well, as I told you uh, just now, yes, cross-linking could be able to do that, to provide the complete cessation, but not in every patient. As I told you, the vast majority of patients show uh, a regression of the keratometric values, a regression of uh, keratoconus and also a cessation. But still, there is a small minority that do not respond well to that. And in these cases, we do not know how to proceed. So that's what we're looking for right now. Really, sometimes uh, cross-linking fails to halt the progression of the keratoconus. But uh, if uh, cross-linking is effective to be repeated in such cases? Yes, the thing is, how do we define failure actually? And how do we define progression of keratoconus even after the initial cross-linking? The thing is that in the literature, there are a lot of definitions about progression of keratoconus. Should that be the increase of manifest cylinder, the increase of uh, maximal keratometry values, or maybe the increase of manifest refractive spherical equivalent? And of course, it should include also the decrease of corneal thickness and the decrease of uncorrected and best corrected visual acuity. So it is really difficult to define that, but I think that there are some really recent and new uh, classifications like the one that uh, came recently from Berlin et al. that shows us uh, that all these parameters can actually be combined in just uh, one ratio and give us an idea if this is, if keratoconus is progressing or not. So yes, if we have a definite uh, progression of keratoconus and in case we can exclude a pseudo progression that can be induced also by an error in measurements or by scarring or even by some limbal uh, uh, some limbal dots like Trandas dots that can be uh, induced by a vernal keratoconjunctivitis, then in such cases, if we exclude the pseudo progression and we have a real progression, the answer is yes, theoretically, cross linking can be repeated. Are there really randomized clinical trials that uh, proves that uh, the repeated cross-linking is effective? Well, here is the big problem about redo, about repeat cross-linking. The fact that uh, till now we do not have any uh, large cohort or a randomized controlled trial on repeat cross-linking. And the only thing that we have in our hands is the knowledge that we get from some uh, case reports or uh, some case series. And actually, most of our knowledge come from the personal experience of uh, some uh, corneal experts and experts on corneal cross-linking. Uh, I would say 
that uh, apart from uh, simple uh, case reports, the, the biggest series comes from uh, Joël Lantoun, and uh, it was published in the Journal of Ophthalmology in 2015. And uh, they just described uh, a whole series of cases. I think it was seven out of 205 cases that makes something more than 3% that uh, failed to stabilize after the initial cross-linking and the follow-ups uh, were between nine months and four years. So after uh, the progression of keratoconus, after the original cross-linking, then a redo procedure was done. And they reported that in terms of safety and efficacy, everything went fine because uh, after one year, uh, after the repeat cross-linking, there was no further progression of keratoconus. So if we want to conclude uh, from the studies that we have in our hands, yes, of course, it is a safe option. It is an efficient option. On the other hand, we should not really forget the hyperopic effect that cross-linking may have. So before doing a repeat cross-linking, we should discuss this with our patient because if our patient does not have a subjective deterioration of their vision, then maybe they won't be really happy after the repeat cross-linking and probably a hyperopic shift that will be induced from that. And how should the clinician proceed if the keratoconus progression is suspect, suspected after cross-linking? Yes, we need to have an algorithm and this is the most important thing. So as I told you, what we need to do first is to define progression. So if we can exclude a pseudo-progression and if we have a deterioration of vision, a decrease both in subjective and objective visual acuity, then we should see if our measurements, both tomography graphic or and topographic are consistent and repeated if so yes and after a discussion with the patient the clinician should proceed with the repeat cross-linking in cases that we do not have a definite progression of keratoconus after the initial procedure and i mean at least six months after the initial procedure because it is it, as it is already shown uh, the cornea remodeling that takes place after the cross-linking may take up to six months. So we shouldn't proceed with any repeat cross-linking in the first six months. But after the first six months, if we have a definite progression, we may proceed. If we have some uh, inconsistent and not repeated measurements, topographic and demographic, then we should repeat these measurements in six to eight weeks time. Aris, thank you for coming and thank you for an interesting eye talk. It was Natalia Nisimo and Argyros Zamelis. Thank you very much. Thank you.